Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all visitors and new members to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and a special welcome to those of you watching online. We are glad you have joined us to celebrate this fourth Sunday of Easter. A few reminders before we begin. We have eight offertory baskets around the church, four in the foyer, and four around the perimeter of the sanctuary. Please feel free to drop in your offertory now, or you can do so as you leave. Second collection envelopes can also be dropped in these baskets as well. We have hand sanitizer with or near these offertory baskets. Please feel free to use those as needed. For the distribution of Holy Communion, we will have two ministers that will move from section to section. When it's your section's turn, please exit your road toward the middle aisle and after receiving, circle around to the other side of the section. Please hold your hand as flat as possible when receiving communion. Our celebrant this morning is Father Danny and he will be assisted by Deacon Spencer. If you would please stand and join in singing our gathering song, Sing to the Mountains. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, 
We are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man, who is not a shepherd, and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down, and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The fourth Sunday of Easter is also known as the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. And as I am about to become the new vocation director for the Diocese of Lexington as of July 1st, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk about vocations. And very often when I'm giving a sermon, I try to be very sensitive and as inclusive as I can possibly be in using certain pronouns. I always use pronouns like we and our and us so that there's no separation between you and me and that we all realize that we are all trying to get to the same place. We are all disciples of our Lord and Savior, and each and every day we should all be doing what we can to carry on and carry out the message of our Lord and Savior. But this morning I would like to talk about basically a vocation to the priesthood. In our gospel passage, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And so I ask myself, what defines a good shepherd? And to my mind, a good shepherd is someone who takes care of other people, who makes other people feel safe and secure and protected. And in that regard, we are all good shepherds. We are all responsible for one another. We should always be treating each other with dignity and respect. We should always look at each other as a brother or a sister in Christ and realize that we are here to take care of one another, to support one another, and to encourage one another. When I think about the shepherds in my life, 
I also think about those people who taught me something that I wanted to bring to my priestly vocation. So I will give you three examples. 30 years ago, I entered seminary for the very first time, and I was at St. Meinrad, the Benedictine Monastery in Southern Indiana. So one day in one of my classes, and the priest's name was Father Aurelius. He had given us an assignment to do, and I thought I had prepared for the assignment. And so I got into class, and he asked a question, and the very first person he chose to answer the question is yours truly. And after he asked the question, I realized I had prepared the wrong assignment. And so I said, Father Aurelius, I'm so sorry, I misunderstood. I thought the assignment was this. And then he started yelling at me in front of the entire class. He embarrassed me, he humiliated me, and in truth, the, it probably didn't last longer than 20 seconds. It felt like it lasted for 20 minutes. I hoped that the floor would just open up and swallow me. I felt so shamed and so embarrassed and humiliated that I had made an honest mistake and that this priest publicly humiliated me in front of my entire class. And I remember thinking later that if ever I do become a priest, that is the sort of shepherd I do not want to be. I never want to publicly humiliate or shame anyone. We all make mistakes, but we are all worthy and deserving of love and respect, and we, we just do, we make mistakes, and that's perfectly okay. Perfection is not a requirement for the priesthood. Perfection is not a requirement to be a spouse or a parent. It's just not required even to be a disciple. We make mistakes. I made a mistake. I was humiliated because of it. The second example of a shepherd who taught me something was Bishop Williams, the founding bishop of our diocese. Now, when I went to seminary for the first time in 91 and 92, I left in, in May of 92. I was 32 years of age, and I thought, this cannot be what God wants from me. I am miserable. I'm not happy, so maybe I've misread all the signs. So I went back to school, got a master's degree, worked as a library director, and then in 1997, I realized that I still had this, what I thought, a call to be a priest. So I went to speak to Bishop Williams. So he calls me to his office. We're going to have this meeting. And I'm standing there in front of Bishop Williams. And he said, uh, would you like a glass of water? Or would you like a cup of coffee? And I said, I don't want to you know, be of any concern to you. I don't want to inconvenience you. So please don't worry about it. He goes, well, what would you prefer? He goes, what would make you the most nervous? And I said, okay, I thought, oh, geez, this meeting is not going to go well. And I said, I'll just take a glass of water, please. And then we sat down and we had the meeting, and he says, so Danny, tell me, why should I give you another chance? Why should I allow you to study for the priesthood again? And so I presented my case to Bishop Williams, and at the end of the meeting, he looked at me and smiled, and he said, okay, Danny, I'm willing to take the risk. I am willing to gamble. I'm going to give you another opportunity to study for the priesthood. And later I thought to myself, if ever I become a priest, that is the sort of shepherd that I want to be. I want to give people second chances. We all deserve another chance. So I thought that's something I wanted to incorporate into my priestly ministry. The third example of shepherds in my life would be my mom and my dad. Now, my mother is one of seven children. My dad is one of seven children. I'm one of seven children. And so one of the things I admired and respected most about my mom and dad, in all honesty, they never compared my siblings to one another. They never said, why couldn't you be more like this one or why couldn't you be more like that one? And mom and dad said from the get-go, it was just obvious I was going to be a different kind of child. I was not going to be like my, like my brothers, Jerry and Nick. Jerry and Nick were very athletic. They were into cars, that sort of thing. Mom and dad said they realized almost from the very beginning that I was going to be needed to, needed to be surrounded with music and art and literature, and they made sure that I got fed. And so one of the things I admired about my mom and my dad is while they had no problem disciplining us when we needed to be disciplined or challenging us when we needed to be challenged, they didn't try to change us. 
They accepted us for who we are. And so I thought later, if ever I become a priest, that is the sort of shepherd I want to be. I want to accept people for who they are, what they are, where they are, and not where I think they should be. Now, have I done this perfectly over the last 20 years? The answer is a resounding no. And if you were at Mass last weekend, you heard me tell a personal story where I had had an opportunity to help a woman in a pharmacy because she had a $2, she had a $2 bill that she, she couldn't afford. She couldn't pay the bill. And so she and I looked at each other, and she walked right past me. I did not help this woman out. Later Sunday afternoon, I called my oldest sister, Michelle, to talk to her, which I usually do on a regular basis. So I called her. I said, Michelle, it's Danny. First words out of her mouth, I am so disappointed in you. I said, why? She said, you had an opportunity to help someone out, and it was only $2, and you didn't do it. I said, Michelle, I've apologized all I can. I'm still haunted by that incident, but, you know, we make mistakes. So perfection is not a requirement for the priesthood or discipleship or in any walk of life. We are imperfect. We are flawed. But Jesus still calls us. So this is what I would ask of you on this day of World, uh, World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Please pray for priestly vocations. Think of it this way. No priests, no sacraments. No sacraments, no church. We need priests. Please pray daily that God will send us men who want to pursue a priestly vocation. To the young men and women here today, I would ask you to daily pray that God will open your eyes and your hearts and your minds to consider what his true vocation for you might actually be. And please do not rule out the priesthood or religious life. The decision to serve God in a priestly vocation is not easy, but it is joyful. But that would be true of any vocation in serving God. It is never easy. But when we give it all that we have, it can be joyful. It can be rewarding. So I would encourage the young people, pray daily to discern your true vocation, what God is calling you to. And if God is calling you to holy matrimony, so be it. That's a wonderful vocation. If God is calling you to explore priesthood or religious life, be open to it. It is a wonderful vocation. Lastly, I would encourage the parents, please, please pray daily for and pray with your children that God will bless and watch over them, that God will open their eyes and their hearts and their minds to discern their true vocation. Do not be afraid to talk to your children about what God might be calling them to because it truly takes all of us working together and praying for one another and listening to one another so that we can eventually discern God's true path for each and every one of us. So please, parents, pray for and pray with your children on a daily basis and ask them to prayerfully consider a life to the priesthood or to the religious life. Because ultimately, I think our goal as disciples is to truly pray and discern our true vocation. And when we pray and discern our true vocation, and then we give it everything we have, then I think we can be certain and we can rest assured that ultimately when we follow God's will for us in our life, that we are ultimately following the best good shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stand, and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, God the, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son and is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. As the Good Shepherd tends his father's flock, so we ask God to help our brothers and sisters. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. That governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people preparing for confirmation and graduation be strengthened for a life of loving service through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community of faith share God's abundant feast with those who cannot be here, including the sick and the homebound. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of vocations to holy orders, holy matrimony, the religious life, and those who remain single for the sake of the kingdom that they will respond with generosity to their vocational call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead the departed into the light of your dwelling place, including Ruth Hart, that they may gaze upon you for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all of the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you sent your Son to care for your flock. Please hear and grant answers to the prayers we have placed before you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
Now, for those watching from home, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Next Sunday, May 2nd, we will pray the rosary immediately following the 845 a.m. Mass in honor of Mary, Queen of Heaven. Everyone is also invited to bring a flower to place before the statue of Mary. Starting Sunday, May 9th, we will be adjusting our Mass schedule to accommodate our growing crowds. From May 9th until June 27th, our Sunday Mass schedule will be 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11.15 a.m. If you have any questions, please contact Amy Burton in the church office. Everyone is invited to attend the Nehemiah Action on April 27th. You can attend either virtually via Zoom or via the drive through option at Mary Queen of the Holy Rosary. The event starts at 7 p.m. and attendees are encouraged to join online or arrive at Mary Queen of the Holy Rosary by 6.30 p.m. Members of the Seas Justice Ministry will be available in the breezeway after Mass to answer whatever questions you might have. Finally, I know the parish is going through a lot of transition and that as of July 1st, you will have a new pastor, a new principal, and a new music director. We are very privileged and I'm very pleased to announce this morning that we have our new principal from Seton School with us who is going to address the congregation at this time. So would you please give a warm welcome to the new principal of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton School, Dr. Kyle Lee. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, much better than last night, thank you. <laughs> I, I also learned that you don't touch the microphone last night because it falls over. So, uh, My name is Kyle Lee. I am absolutely honored and excited to be the upcoming and new principal at Seton Catholic School. When I was approached about speaking at Mass, um, I gladly accepted. As many of you will come to learn, I like talking a lot. I'm aware it's the end of Mass, so I'll try to keep it brief. But I did make a mistake. I made a mistake of saying, well, what do you want me to talk about when I address everyone? Well, you know, just tell them about yourself. Tell them about your background, your accomplishments, and, and stuff like that. Okay. So I don't know about you, but I was brought up to be humble, to not talk about yourself, to not gloat, to put other people before you. So if I'm not mistaken, there was a blurb published in the bulletin or maybe online that kind of gives you all my career and education in, uh, info. If you're really interested in that, uh, go back and take a read, or if you're having trouble falling asleep at night, feel free to take a read at that. I promise it'll help. So I started to plan out, what am I going to say? What am I going to talk about? What would people like to hear? And I immediately went to where I'm comfortable. I started to dive into the key points of my educational philosophy and leadership, those things that I come to value as an educator, the things that I am confident make people better. I organized a list of key points and details. I got everything written out real nice. And then I did as I always do. I said, honey, you have a minute to listen to what I've prepared? <laughs> now, if there's ever been a woman who's edging her way towards Saint sainthood, it's my wife, Emily. <laughs> she gets the luxury of enjoying all the amazing ideas and theories and proposals that I come up with. So I excitedly blabbered on about my educational rhetoric, and I did something that all public speakers should do, but most don't, and that's take note of their audience, their reactions, their expressions, and their engagement. 
And I noted from my wife's reaction is she was giving me what I call the look. <laughs> now, let me just pause for a second. All married folks out there who have been together for any amount of time know exactly what I'm talking about, men. It's the eyes that say so much, but don't utter a single word. I call it the look. No worries, I got the message. So I decided that I would probably be best to take this talk in a different direction. Instead of drowning you in a lecture about educational philosophy, Instead, I'd like to just give you five fun facts about me that you probably wouldn't otherwise know unless you talk to someone who does know me or I told you. Uh, by the way, just a quick side note, if anybody does want to have that talk about educational philosophy and leadership, mm -hmm. my information will be printed in the bulletin soon. Please contact me. I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Five fun facts about me. And let's start with the big one, the elephant in the room. And it's probably one of the things that I am asked about the most. Why do you wear bow ties? It's not to be cool. I'll tell you a story real quick. And I've taught elementary school. I've been an elementary school principal. And a lot of kids at elementary school, they come up to about your waist, and they love to give you hugs. Kids love to give hugs. And I used to wear neckties. And being a male in an elementary school, you do the old awkward side hug, where you, know, you have to they hug your leg, and you pat them on the back. Like, and my ties would always fall down. Any given day, I could tell you what we had for lunch because my ties were being ruined with barbecue sauce, with ketchup, honey mustard, goobers. My ties just had everything on them. So I decided, you know what? I'm tired of ruining my ties. I'm going to start wearing bow ties. And this was probably seven or eight years ago. And so I did, as everybody does when they want to learn something new, I went to YouTube. And I learned how to tie a bow tie. Now, there were lots of videos on YouTube about how to tie a bow tie. Lots of wrong videos on how to tie a bow tie. But there was one in particular that I remember. It was a gentleman who had an English accent, and he had a yellow bow tie. And what made his video different is that he didn't show you face on how to tie a bow tie. He gave you instructions of himself in the mirror showing you how to tie a bow tie. And that's what you see when you go to tie a bow tie. So it made it a lot easier. Number two, I used to perform in Madison Square Garden at New York Knicks home halftime show games with a group called BD Entertainment. It wasn't a big deal, just a little bit of uh, weekend work for a college guy. Number three, in 2003, I performed with a group called the Cadets out of New Jersey, and I won a world percussion championship. I am a percussionist by trade, which means I have a degree in the appropriate techniques for striking, scraping, and shaking things. <laughs> Number four. I'm a level one certified wine sommelier, which means that I know more about the art and science of growing grapes and waking, making wine than is ever needed to enjoy a glass of vino. And number five, now, if there are any kids from Seton Catholic School in here, they actually, some of them know number five already because I got to visit the school a couple weeks ago and I shared this with them. It's about enjoying a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, there is a certain way to make and enjoy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Here's, here's rule number one. It's always smooth or creamy peanut butter, not crunchy. I hear you, no exceptions, okay? Number two, it's strawberry jelly. Folks, grapes are for making wine, as we discussed in number four. And it has to be served with a small little dish of ketchup for dipping. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't tried it, don't judge. <laughs> there you go. There's five fun facts about me. Now, just real fast before I close, I want to point something out. Something that could have been easily overlooked during all five of those. Number one is I, I didn't accomplish any of those things on my own. Actually, rather, none of them can be done on their own and be successful. Let me show you. Bow ties. I was not able to learn how to tie a bow tie without the support of the fella from YouTube. Number two and three, I performed with a group. And as a group, we got better. And we won titles and championships and entertained folks. Number four, let's be real, folks. Wine is always best enjoyed with other people, good fellowship and good food. And number five, Peanut butter without jelly, well, you just have a mouthful of stuff with peanut butter sandwich and jelly. Well, you have to eat it with something, breakfast or biscuits. I am confident that that same need that ha we have in these fun facts is the same partnership that we must continue to have between the church and the school. The school needs your continued support and your continued prayers. I don't view the school 
and the church is separate, so rather I view them as one. One unit, one body, with one mission. And that mission is to help folks, big and small, young and old, become the saints that we're all called to be. So I leave you with one request, and no worry, it'll just be the first of many. Please, 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 pray for our school. Please pray for our teachers. Pray for our students and our staff. Pray for our church. And please pray for me, knowing that I am praying for you too. Thank you. God bless. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.